Good morning and welcome to the OTB channel. This is an extra video for this week as I've just noticed that on the DistroWatch uh, page, Debbie in 10 has just been released. So I had no choice really. I thought I'd give it a spin. Debian used to have the reputation of being really hard to install. Is that still the case? Who knows? I'm going to use the Debian Live CD, which I've never done before. I'm going to set it up in VirtualBox. Let's see how easy it is. Before we look at that, I should just say that the image I have downloaded is from the cdimage.debian.org site, and I've picked the non-free Live Marte ISO. Now, I've run Debian, uh, plain Debian, uh, for a fair amount of the years that... Uh, I've been playing around with Linux. In fact, it was my go-to system from around 2009 to 2015 when I eventually hopped over to Ubuntu and to Arch Linux. However, I was always impressed with Debian and just how stable it was, although the installation was never completely simple. So I thought I'd give it a spin again now that uh, Debian 10 has been released. And I've downloaded the Live CD, and I've never used the Debian Live CD before. Um, I've downloaded the non-free ISO uh, to make sure that the non-free blobs and firmware are already included. I probably don't need it within VirtualBox, but I found in the past that the non-free ISO just makes life easier. I've set a VirtualBox up for an EFI installation. So let's see if it boots. You can see I've attached the uh, Debian 10 AMD64 Marte, of course, non-free ISO to uh, VirtualBox. I've created just under a 30 gig um, disk, virtual disk. What my intention is, is to run this and to do as automatic an installation as possible. So let's hit start. And I've put it at full screen. And let's see if it boots. Okay, so we've got the Grub screen up. Let's just hit the live installer and see what happens. Okay, well, we very quickly got a prompt there, um, and now the screen's gone black, and nothing seems to be happening. This could be because things are happening in the background, but I have to say that for a new user, this might be quite disturbing. I'll admit that I've done this uh, a few minutes before, and I know that's just part of the standard installation or the standard launching of the live CD. And there you have it. It's come up. Um, it doesn't immediately look as if the VirtualBox guest editions are installed. But if I go to the control center, hit displays, and my display is actually on this one, uh, 1680 by 1050, and I apply. There we go. It's full screen, all seems to be working fine. And it does indeed look like the guest editions are already installed. So let's go ahead and double click on the install Debian icon and see what happens. I should say that as far as this virtual machine is concerned, I've, it's on my Intel NUC, like everything I've done so far. I've given it uh, two threads of my i5 uh, processor, and I've given it 8 gig of my 16 gig of RAM, which should be more than enough. So it's asking me to uh, pick my language. American English. No, I want British English, which is where. <laughs> ah, here we are. British English. Right, next. No, I don't want America. I want Europe and London. Okay, so it didn't automatically uh, spot where I am. 
but not necessarily a problem. Hit next. I want UK English keyboard. That's great. And what do I want to do? Um, I want to just erase the disc. This is a brand new uh, disc. It's never had anything on it, or at least it's a brand new virtual disc. I'm pleased to see that it's already spotted. I'm using an EFI system. So I'm just going to hit erase disc. And it's telling me what it's going to create. And it very much looks like it will automatically set the system up for EFI. Okay, it's got an 8.8 .8 gig swap partition. Probably too big for my needs, but we'll just go with that. We'll hit next. What is your name? Um, my name's OTB. And do I want a password to keep everything safe? Yeah, why not? Log in automatically without asking for the password? No, I don't think we're going to do that. For security reasons, it's never a good idea. OK, so it's now telling me what it's setting up. It's setting the time zone as Europe, London. The system language will be set to British English. The numbers and dates locale will be set to British English. English. It's given me an English UK default keyboard. It spotted the disk as Dev SDA. It's setting it up with a GPT partition table and it's creating an EFI partition, a FAT32 EFI partition of 300 megs. Um, it's giving me 20,816 megs for my root partition set up as EXT4 and it's creating a swap partition there. OK, and it's also saying it's going to set up a new FAT32 partition with the mount point boot forward slash EFI and install Debian on the new EXT4 system partition. OK, all good. And off it goes. I'm just going to allow this to run now and we'll come back once it's finished what it's doing. So that's all done. Um, on my system, I started this uh, installation at 11.35. It's now 11.40. So it took five minutes to do the installation. Not bad. Um, the CPU usage during the course of the installation didn't really go above 25%, uh, which was pretty good. It seemed to stick on 26% for a few minutes, uh, but then suddenly took off and completed very quickly. So, so far, so good. Let's see what happens when I restart. As you can see, it's all been done. There was no additional interaction required from me. It was just automatic. So let me hit done. And we boot straight to Grub. And we get our nice splash screen, which you never used to get with plain Debian. And we're at the login screen. So OTB and my password. Done. My goodness, Debian used to be so hard. I remember in the days of Debian Sarge, it took me hours and hours to do my first installation. We've got a nice, minimal Marte installation. That's absolutely great. What can I say? It can't get simpler than that. Let's have a quick chat. So that's it. I have to admit to being a little bit stunned. When I first tried an installation of Debian back in the Debian Sarge days, I failed multiple times um, installing it. I did eventually get there, but it took a long, long time. Now, though, with this live CD, it's as simple as Ubuntu. Five minute installation. What could be easier? Back in the day, Ubuntu was released as an alternative to playing Debian because Debian was seen as 
the geek operating system, not for normal people really, uh, Ubuntu was for human beings. Well, it looks to me like Debian's for human beings as well now. I'd suggest that everybody give it a go, even if you just do it in VirtualBox and play around with it. Brilliant, great progress, plain Debian, as stable as they come. So that's it, a quick video. Have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, I'll see you next Saturday.